assalamu alaikum dear students how are you fine nice uh, i hope you are enjoying go to uh, page 64 of your book i mean say class 9th and uh, subject english and topic is a poem we are going to read a poem today the name of the poem is the road not taken by robert frost it's at page number 64 and 65 of your book keep the book ready in front of you and also keep your uh, you know rough notebook with you and uh, keep a pen ready for maybe you have to write here and there something now before we you know go to the actual text of the poem which i will read for you because poetry is basically meant to be heard you have to listen to the poem i'll recite it and then uh, we'll try to find out certain poetic devices certain poetic techniques in this poem and we will also look have a look at the theme of the poem you know uh we will uh, have a discussion together now before i go to the text let's know something about robert frost first it's from your book you can you can read it you can see it here page 64 robert lee frost was born in 1874 so 1874 and uh, he died in 1963 so he was a 20th century poet american poet was born in san francisco california frost attended high school in lawrence massachusetts this is its pronunciation is massachusetts and began writing poetry frost continued to write poetry but was unsuccessful at publishing his work so in literature when you come across this literary work you come across this word work it means poem it means novel it means drama it means essay so he could not publish his whatever he wrote seeking better literary opportunities the frosts means the frost family sold their farm and moved to england in 1912 in england frost achieved his first literary success his book of poems a boy's will 1913 was printed by the first english publisher that frost approached this he reached there the work established frost as an eminent poet that means he became famous his second collection north of boston was published in 1914 and also won praise that means acclaim he won the poetry prize in poetry for four times that is 1924 1931 1937 and 1943 that is he was awarded this award he wrote simply that means his poems are simple i am reminded of one of his poems here stopping by woods on a snowy evening when he says i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep but insightfully that means he you know he takes a small incident and writes a poem on it and go discusses some philosophical point there about common ordinary experiences so he will talk about you know common experiences ordinary experiences and then he will say a philosophical thing that the same thing is happening in here in this poem also you know uh, we can call it a symbolic poem later on we'll discuss a bit about some symbol also so that means this this is not the road which we generally say that i took this road and i did that it's actually the choice or the decision a person makes in his life sometimes he has to make or she has to make a decision she has to take a make make a, he has to make a choice or she, people have to make a choice and then they cannot change it this well known poem is about making choices and the choices that shape us so in later later on when you go even after passing your matric some of you will take medical subject some of you will take non medical subject some of you will go for art some of you will go for commerce so that later on you cannot change that decision whatever you 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 will you will you will have in your life so that that will shape your life now let me first read the text for you you can you can keep the books closed it's no not necessary that here you will keep the books open and later when we will have discussion on the point then you can keep the books open also if you want to keep the books open no problem but you more concentrate more on listening rather than on 
looking at your book. Okay. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grossy and wanted wear. Though as for that the passing there had worn them, had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trod in black. Oh, I kept the first for the another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood. And I, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. You see, in, you know, uh, what is the main difference between poetry and prose is this, that in poetry you have, it is in rhythm. That is, you will not read poetry just like you read, for example, prose. Just now I read. Robert Frost's biographical sketch to you, for example, Robert Frost was born in San Francisco, California. Frost attended high school. This is prose. But you see here, two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. So, this is no poem. It has to be recited. You have to say the structural words, quickly grammatical words, but you have to say the man words, content words uh, with, with stress, with proper stress. Now, if we look at this poem, the road not taken. We have, we have different poems of different category. For example, we have sonnets, we have odes, we have epic, we have narrative poem. So, this poem, you know, it comes under the category of lyric. Now, what is actually a lyric? Lyric is a Greek word, it has come from the Greek word lyre, l y r e, which means a musical instrument. So, when you can you can yourself imagine that when it has come from the Greek word lyre, which means a musical, musical instrument, it has something to do with music. So, that is why we say that a lyric poem is you know musical. So, first of all, we can call a lyric a musical poem. Okay? Then this lyric is generally usually short. So, see, look at this poem. It is not a you know long poem. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 stanzas, 5 lines each. So, 20 lines poem. So, it is not a it's a short poem, it is not a long poem. And then you have also what is called as this is this poem, this lyric is in it is a personal poem. So, what makes it personal? The use of the use of pronoun I or for example, me, my that makes it personal. Here he says, and sorry, I could not travel both. Here he says, I shall be telling this with a sigh. Here he says, I doubted if I. Here he says, I kept the first. So, this and I, and I, this is and I, I. So, it is repeating, this is stressing the point, emphasizing. So, this is this makes it personal. In other words, we can also call it a subjective poem. In other words, there is what is called as a romantic element in this poem. This uh, Robert Frost is a romantic poet uh, with a difference. That means he, you know, uh, just now you read he writes simply but insightfully about common and ordinary experiences of life. And it's a poem in which you know there the poet expresses his emotions and feelings, feelings and emotions, emotions and feelings. That is the essence of poetry. You know, poetry is shyry. It touches your heart, it touches your you know feelings, it touches your emotions, it, it appeals to your senses. That is why imagery comes into, 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 into force in poetry. So, we have emotions and feelings here in lyric. The poet is in this poem also expressing his inner feelings and emotions. And then there is you know lot of imagination is at work. So, this poem will you take will take you into imagination. If you do the first line. 
two roads diverged in a yellow wood yellow wood you know is it refers to something you no know, autumn or maybe the leaves of the uh, trees had turned yellow and uh, you know it's a forest where the poet is in a dilemma is in a fix so there are two roads one is going this way and is going this way he is not in a position to decide which which way to, to take there's nobody to tell him so you also go there in your heart of hearts you feel yourself through imagery inside you, you go in you go into imagination and then the, there is also what is called as description of nature is there for example you find here wood you find here leaves you see here again wood so this you see here different words are there which undergrowth grassy so this has something to do with nature not man made things god made things natural things so this under the category of the poems it comes under a lyric it's a lyric now what are the other devices which we find in this poem apart from this rhythm rhythm is there you will see every stanza almost the same you know they have the same structure and then if you, if you see the lines they are same that is that is the same means wo jo wo bolte hai na urdu mein bahar yani agar inko do tarazu mein do inme dalenge do palno mein to ye barabar rahenge us hisab se wazan ke hisab se so that is actually it's a internal it refer rhythm refers to the internal music which is present in the words of a poem so next there we find in this poem we find there rhyme now what is rhyme see the end words are have the same sound for example if you look at the first stanza first line the last word is wood so you have line number 1 okay i'll keep it name as we'll we'll keep it name a this is fictitious we can add x also and then next line line number 2 is both so line number 2 end so i'll call it b and then there is stood so stood is line number 3 and it 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 goes with this so i'll again call it a and then there is could so it again goes with stood or would so it's line number 4 we can call it again a and then there is under growth so last word is growth last sound rather so we have here five and we'll call it again b so we can say that stanza 1 has a rhyme scheme of a b a a b in fact every stanza of this poem has a rhyme scheme of a b a a b look at second stanza fair where claim same there where say lay day black back you say you say lay then black then day then way then back you say there sai then we have hands then we have i then we have by and then we have difference so that means you you have the same you know rhyme scheme throughout the poem and then another device we have we call it alliteration these are the things actually you know in poetry what you have to do you don't don't look for a story in the poem there may be but actually you have to look at the language you have to see how the poem has been written you have to see how the, it has been structured how which words have been used why have these been words used because the poet uses you know selected words and he 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 has to say a lot in some words alliteration is you know initial consonant sound is are repeated more than once it can be within a line or it can be within a stanza suppose if you go to stanza number 1 2 3 you find here lay and then you see here leaves you see here black you see here back you, you see again leaves here that's lay leaves you see here way again you have way you see here doubted you see here day so when the poet is repeating you know initial consonant sounds what do you find alliteration and this rhythm rhyme alliteration assonance consonance these actually these are for you know creating music 
in a poem. Assonance. Assonance means repetition of vowel sounds. Now, it is not it's not necessary that whether he, whether the poet is repeating at the initial level or he is repeating at the middle in the middle or he is repeating at the end. If we see at stanza 1 you see and again you have and again you have and you have stood you have could you have would you have growth you have both you have fair you have where you have claim you have same. So, you have same vowel sound is there. Okay? Suppose you have in, in claim you have a vowel sound and in same also you have again a, a vowel sound there. Stood you have uh, u and could also you have u. So, that means there is assonance. So, we find assonance also here in this poem. For example, we say could, if you say would, if we say stood. So, in all these words the vowel sound is the same. If you write and then you say again and, then you say again and, vowel sound the same. Uh, then there is consonance. Now, consonance refers to the you know repetition of consonants generally at the end, at the end. For example, if you say back, you have black. So, you have cur here, you have cur here. So, uh, you have wood, uh, you have Traveled, you have diverged, you have uh, this um, traveled, you have wood, you have diverged. So, you have, you, have, you have and. So, in the last stanza, if you see say and again, here again road is, you know, sorry, road and, then you have traveled, then you have diverged, you have again and, you have again and. So, that means you have made. So, that means the poet is repeating the last consonant sound. Is. Suppose here in case of this, we find the sound being repeated again and again in the word and, in the word would, in the word and, in the word diverged, in the word traveled, in the word made. So, you have the same vowels, this consonant sound that will be consonants. Then, one of the most important things in poetry which we find is that is called imagery. That is there in this poem. Mostly we find visual images here. First of all, I will write, make you write, please write down what imagery means. Please write. Imagery refers to the use to the use of words it refers to the use of words especially in poetry to describe ideas or situations the poet has to describe experiences and he describes these experiences through images they can be of different kinds for example visual so you can have visual imagery that is when you see something in your mind you can have auditory when you hear you can have olfactory that means smell, we can have gastratory that is taste, sweet, sour, bitter. Then you have tactile touch, you touch and you say it is hot, it is, it is, it is warm. And then you have kinesthetic that is got sensation of movement and you have also what is called as organic. So, organic has something to do with your heart feeling. For example, if, if, you, if the poet says like he makes you fearful, he makes you nostalgic. This poem is also you know nostalgic in tone because the poet is thinking about his past. I will be telling with this with a sigh that has made all the difference. So, that is nostalgic. Two roads diverge in a yellow wood and uh, sorry I could not travel both. So, he is actually feeling and then elated, happy, sad. So, that means that that, that kind of uh, this we have usually we have in this poem we have mostly organic imagery here and we have also what is called as visual imagery. For example, I can give you examples of visual imagery from this poem. You can write the word is uh, road is, is there. So, word road is yellow wood, okay. traveler, you have undergrowth, uh, you have grossy, you have leaves, you have black which is color, you can see black color, you have way and organic you have see here I shall be telling this with a sigh. So, when he says I shall be telling this with a sigh. So, it is something you know some feeling is coming there and then he says and sorry I could not travel both. So, some sort of you know regret is coming in our hearts we feel like we, we, we identify ourselves with the poet and we also feel the same. So, imagery is there especially we have you know we, we, we find uh, visual imagery here and 
also organic imagery here. And then there's another kind of uh, you know poetic device here in this poem, which I call as which is you know anaphora. Anaphora, a n a p h o r a. This is a poetic device actually. So you can write anaphora, the repetition of, the repetition of an identical word. It can be a word, or group of words, more than one word, in successive verses. जो lines होते हैं ना poetry में, वो verses होते हैं. Share or clauses. For example, I can give you example from this poem. Look at stanza number one. Line number two starts with and. Look at line number three starts with and. Look at number four starts with and. So you can call it anaphora. Example of anaphora here, because line number two, line number three, line number four start with the same word and. Okay. Then you have metaphors also there. और मेटाफर एक्चुअली पोइट्री में अक्सर पॉइट जो है ही मेक्स यूज ऑफ मेटाफर्स जैसे अगर पॉइट को बोलना होगा लाइफ जो है ये स्ट्रगल है ये डिफिकल्ट है वो बोलेगा लाइफ इज गोइंग अप हिल सो दैट इन दैट सेंस द पॉइट इज एक्चुअली मेकिंग अस अंडरस्टैंड दैट लाइफ इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट इट्स इट्स अ स्ट्रगल सो यहां पर पॉइट जो है जैसे इफ यू लुक एट द वर्ड रोड इफ यू लुक एट द वर्ड येलो वुड These are actually metaphor, metaphoric words. For example, yellow wood here refers to making decisions of during hard times of a person's life. Yellow wood. Why? Because it was autumn. Is winter was about to set in, and here you have roads here. It refers to life. And then there is symbol. So in symbol you have that means, for example, if we say road, for me when I became a teacher. it was a road for me when somebody became a doctor it was for him a road somebody became an engineer it was somebody became a businessman it was somebody is interested you know some in some other is is in uh, in some art so that means whenever we take a decision in our life we are actually symbol or metaphor mein ye farak hai otherwise dono same hai symbol can have different meanings metaphor metaphor can have a particular kind of meaning for example if i say he was a lion i mean he was brave but if i say white so white can mean color white can mean purity white can mean peace white can mean you know happiness it can mean sadness so that is called a symbol so we have also symbol here now you i i i will uh, just uh, i i think i hope you you have got the, these things in in this in this poem now you can you can read it uh, silently read the poem silently and then is you can do these questions very easily which are which are asked in the end and uh, i hope you 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 will have enjoyed this this poem uh, uh, in a nice way uh, thank you very much i uh, uh, hope uh, you stay at home and uh, stay safe thank you see you uh, goodbye